YouTube as it going the goat house is back with bold predictions for NFL week 11 sent in by you guys through our Twitter if you want to get involved in this video every Thursday go to our Twitter we got constant NFL talk on there uh, even during live games Thursday night games tonight we're, we're gonna be talking all the way through it like we do at every game Instagram podcast Patreon a lot more going on links in the description in comments for anything that you need. Please subscribe if you're new. Full NFL coverage, picks, score predictions, power rankings every single week in the offseason, free agency, and NFL draft coverage. We're always going all year long here. Uh, so please subscribe. Really appreciate the support from anybody. Uh, Patreon, I mentioned that. Link down below. Junior score predictions up for this week, up every week. My bets of the week for NFL and college football. Uh, got quite a few for college football this week. College football score predictions as well. Updated playoff predictions. Uh, every single week, always changing those. Bonus content, Discord access, always adding more. Really appreciate anybody who signed up. A lot of supporters out there. We love you. Uh, to the bold predictions of week 11. A wild week. I'm expecting a lot of good games. But the first one comes from Aaron is sus. Jameis Winston proves he is the future for the Saints and leads them to a win. Kind of a two-parter. Leads them to the win. That definitely can do that. You know, that's obviously very realistic. Let's 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 forget that part. I like the other part because this is pretty interesting. And I'm I'm actually thinking the other part. Uh, Winston proves he is the future for the Saints. Key words there for the Saints. That's piping. Uh, I think he can prove that he's worthy of starting for a, the Saints or any other team. But I don't think he's back on the Saints. Remember, he took a pr pretty good discount there because no one really wanted him. I'm banking on some teams wanting him as the starter. Uh, therefore, he'll get paid a little, uh, quite a bit more than what he's getting paid now, uh, and then therefore the Saints really can't afford them, uh, afford him. Uh, they're going to be uh, in the worst cap situation in the NFL, uh, maybe in history. It's pretty bad. They're going to clear some space. They really do a good job adjusting contracts, uh, shifting things around, clearing space. They'll do that, but they'll still be pretty far in the negative. So it's going to be very tough for them to bring Winston back, uh, unless it's super cheap, but. That way, you know, if if he's that cheap, you know, he's probably not playing that great, you know, in his uh, in his chances here. So I, I think that's a long shot, actually. So I'll say that's piping. But um, I think his point here is that he'll play good enough to show that he's a starter uh, and he'll lead them to a win. That is very realistic. You know, that wouldn't wouldn't be anywhere near piping, obviously. So that's a pretty interesting one. Uh, next from Blake Stewart, Damian Harris, the Patriots running back, gets 200 scrimmage yards. Uh, so what do we think? 150 rushing, 50 receiving, somewhere around there. 1 130 rushing, you know, 1 uh, 140 rushing, you know, somewhere around there. And obviously 60 more to get the screen. You get what I'm saying. Uh, I think it's possible going against the Texans, the very worst run defense in football. They're pretty terrible against running backs in general. Damian Harris looks like he's getting better. First few times we saw them. Saw him this year. They were pretty hesitant to use him, but they finally like, all right, well, let's give it a go. We like what we see in practice. You've heard that. Some other guys are hurt. We still haven't seen Michelle this year, really. Um, so they gave it a go. Yeah, he's a, he's a little, you know, hot and cold at first. Um, you know, wanted to see him hit the hole a little better, not hesitate. But now he's really getting going. Looks like a, looks like a whole new running back with a lot of upside. So he looks really good. So he's very capable of this. It's a lot of yards. It's a lot of yards. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, I'm, I can't say piping, I'm going to say hot because it is a lot of yards, very doable though, uh, but it could be a Burkhead week, it could be a James White week, we don't know, we don't know there. Uh, James White hasn't really been getting too much action, I think Harris, Burkhead will be will be splitting, uh, Harris got most of the snaps last week, you never know with the Patriots though, uh, so that, yeah, that'll be a lot of yards if he's you know, sp splitting I guess, but they're liking him more and more, I'm liking him more and more, so possibility there against the Texans uh, from Bray. Uh, the Texans hold Damian Harris to under 100 rushing yards. So this is pretty much the opposite end, but it's also it's also somewhat realistic at the same time because, like I said, you know, are they are they going to run Burkhead? Um, you know, are they going to give the ball to Jace White quite a bit? So because they split all the way throughout their their depth, I suppose he could have under 100 rushing yards. I'm thinking he has over. But I, you know, again, even though I'm not predicting this, I do think it's pretty realistic. It's hot at the same time because the Texans' run defense is terrible. But it's realistic because the different guys are going to have to get the ball there. And that's very much a possibility. I picked up Damian Harris this week. I'm starting him, so you know I'm fully expecting Burkhead to be getting an insane amount of carries just because of that. There's really no logic behind it, but um, I think everyone thinks the same way probably. Uh, so we'll see. It's all it's all very realistic here. Next. 
RJ Dil Diliberto. I probably said that wrong. I apologize. Uh, Zeke returns to form, rushing for 100 plus yards and two touchdowns. So I'm making this a two parter. You know, if we're going, both those need to happen. Um, both of those. If we're going, both those need to happen at the same time. Piping or is it hot? I'm gonna say it's. I'm gonna say it's pretty piping against the Vikings. I, it's doable. They're not the best defense anymore. I'm gonna say it's piping. The hundred yards part, uh, I'm gonna call hot, leaning towards piping. I think that's what makes it piping. Combining the two, uh, I do think the two touchdowns part is pretty. Uh, I think it's that's pretty realistic. It's pretty realistic. Um, I almost think that's warm. I'm almost gonna call that warm. So we're all over the place with this one, but I think both hap both happening at the same time is pretty tough because getting two touchdowns is one challenge. Even though I do, I do think it's pretty darn realistic if he just gets if they get in the goal line, uh, 100 yards. Um, I just don't see happening. The Vikings shut him down last year. Zeke seems to be worse this year. Um, Vikings defense is a little worse, but it's more the pass defense. I just I think they're gonna be need to, needing to throw the ball a lot in this game, so I think that takes away from some snaps from them as well. So I just don't see that part happening, but we'll see. Uh, Steve Mozada, Will Greer will start for the Panthers and throw for three touchdown passes and win against the Lions. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a toss up who will start. Uh, I think Teddy Bridgewater actually could start still. He's hurt, but he wants to play, uh, and even if he doesn't, uh, I think it'll be PJ Walker. I believe, but. They could use both. They could decide it's Will Greer. They haven't really said yet. Uh, so on top of this, he needs to throw three touchdown passes and win. So all of this, there's so much that needs to happen. It's piping. But this is interesting because Will Greer has a chance to play this week. Um, you know, I probably prefer Walker. But Greer and, you know, a Joe Brady offense could be interesting as well. Um, but remember when Bridgewater went down against the Falcons for a little bit, they put P.J. Walker in. So we'll see. It's a pretty interesting thing to kind of look out for here. Uh, but pretty piping if all this happens. Rex and Kendall Russell Wilson gets back on track and throws for four touchdowns and zero interceptions. DK goes for a over 150. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot, but I I do think it's uh, I I do think that's very possible. I'm gonna say warm. I almost went with uh, real being kind of hot but realistic at the same time. I think it's possible, but I'm kind of back and forth. You know, are they gonna do this? Or are they gonna pound the football? Because it looks like Carlos Hyde is gonna be playing. You know, so that's what makes it tough. But four touchdown passes for Russell Wilson, uh, very doable, you know, against the Cardinals as well. You know, very doable. DK getting 150 yards, that's very, yeah, very realistic. So I know that's two things that need to happen, but I think it's very realistic there. But I think what's keeping it is really not the defense showing up, but more of uh, more of are they going to go to back what they used to do, pound the football. Uh, but that kind of brings us to the next one. Jesse F. Carlos Hyde will rush for 100 plus yards, and, and Seahawks will win. Um, I like what, what's. Let's see. All right, so if both happening. He has to get over 100 yards, and the Seahawks will win. You know, I'm gonna. I think it's the same answer for everything. I was gonna split them up. I think it's very realistic. I'm gonna call it warm. It's not too hot at all. Um, I think Carlos Hyde's going to run very well. I'm starting to feel that today. We see all these guys out for the Seahawks. I picked the Seahawks. I do like the way the Cardinals match up with the Seahawks. That's why I picked them last time. Uh, but, you know, Seahawks, Thursday night football. and um, But you see all these injuries for them. You see all these guys that are probably going to be out. So that makes me almost want to switch my pick. And I'm still on the fence about it. Toss-up game. Um, but then I'm thinking, you know, I really think they're going to go back to their old ways, but they need Chris Carson to do it, but they don't really need Chris Carson. They need either Chris Carson or Carlos Hyde. They're going to have Carlos Hyde tonight, and they're going to pound the football, and I think he'll be pretty successful. Uh, Corey Peters, their best run stopper for the Cardinals D-line, he's out for season, and Jordan Phillips is a defensive lineman. He, he's probably going to miss the game as well. Uh, so I think Hyde has a pretty big day, and if, and if, and if he does, the Seahawks will win the game. So I think that's pretty realistic, pretty interesting. Yeah, if anybody picked up Carlos Hyde, it actually could be pretty big. That could, that could be pretty big for fantasy here. Uh, so that's a pretty good one. Uh, Jace FTG Steelers lose to the Jags because they have the tendency to lose to bad teams. Um, I understand what you're saying. You know, they have the tendency to play poor against bad teams. I understand that if they've kind of proven that over time. But there's not too much logic behind I think it's pretty piping. Um... I, I just don't see how they can lose to the Jags. The Cowboys had kind of the game plan factor. You didn't really know what to expect from the Cowboys. Like, what do we game plan for? Garrett Gilbert's playing. They just picked them up. What are we going to get? 
Uh, I think the focus is stopping Zeke, they're probably thinking. But Zeke hasn't been playing that good, but that's kind of the main guy there. Uh, and then Garrett Gilbert's throwing pretty good. He's got a collection of weapons, and you know Pollard looked pretty good as well. So it was a very tough game plan, in interesting matchup as well. Now, now that you know what to expect from the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, and they're gonna come. You know they're gonna come out running the ball. They're, that's that's their way to kind of get the passing game going and get going in general. And the Steelers are very good at stopping that, so they'll stop that, and then they'll focus on the pass. It, it'll it. This should be a no problem. Yeah, anything can happen, especially this year. But this should be no problem. Um, I don't see. I know people are kind of thinking this way because of the Cowboys game, but I don't really see the similarities to that game. Uh, Tanner Brisbane, Derrick Henry repeats his playoff performance against the Ravens: 160 plus rushing yards and two touchdowns. Am I a madman if I call this? My if I call this uh, this warm? Ah, I almost want to do it. I, I picked the Titans because 160 and two two touchdowns. I think will happen. 160 is a lot. I'm thinking it's going to happen. That's bold to me, maybe, but this is why I picked the Titans. Um, I I don't think the Ravens' run defense is as good as we all think it is. I think you look at the stats, and you're like, all right, and the Ravens are they are very good defense in general. Don't get me wrong there. Very good defense. Top of the NFL points per game. Uh, statistically, they look pretty good against the run. They haven't played too many challenging run units, run offenses. When they did, I talked about this in the other videos, they, they played the Browns the first game of the year. Those guys, they beat up the Browns pretty good, but Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt ran extremely well. They just had to pretty, they had to stop running because they were down by so much, the Browns that is, that they they, they, they couldn't waste the time. They couldn't afford to run. Um, they ran extremely well. Uh, then you look at uh, Miles Sanders with limited reps ran all over them. He ran pretty crazy on them. And then you see uh, Damien Harrison company last week, Rex Burkhead, Cam Newton, those guys ran wild on the Ravens. Uh, and those were the, really the only good things I would, the people I would, uh, units I would call consistent and good at the same time, running units. Uh, now you play, there's the best one you're going to see in Derrick Henry, arguably with the Browns. Um, I think he runs pretty well. If the Ravens come out and score right away, and they get a stop, and they'll score again, which is very doable. And this changes completely. This is shut down completely. So similar to the Browns game, if it starts off the way the Browns game did, which was week one, different time. That was a different league back then. It was the same league, but it was a different league. Um, so I think this is doable. I think this is very possible here. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a game of who can manage the clock better. Uh, and that's why I roll with Derrick Henry. But the Ravens, are they're favored by 6.5. That makes it interesting. Uh, Swavy 88 Aaron Rodgers struggles this week like how he did against Tampa Aaron Rodgers could could str define struggle though that, that's the interesting thing about Aaron Rodgers you look at the Vikings game they lost to the Vikings uh, he played good but it wasn't Aaron Rodgers you know it didn't really feel like Aaron Rodgers do you can he played okay do you f consider that struggles or you yeah struggles like he plays bad uh, I guess it defines that I'll say this the Colts can slow him down he's not going to play bad the Colts can slow him down and win the game because the defense we've seen some teams slow him down enough to win that is very realistic but uh, the key point here is Tampa Bay uh, he's going to struggle the way he did against Tampa what did Tampa do they blitzed the, the crap out of him. They blitzed the crap out of him while having the edge rush presence of Shaq Barrett and Jason Pierre-Paul, but they blitzed Devin White, Levante David uh, like crazy, and they, they they weren't allowing him to get roll outside, get outside like he does. They were blitzing him, so he couldn't do that, and they were getting instant pressure. It was kind of the first time all year they've seen that. The Colts, isn't, the Colts aren't the same defense as Tampa. You can definitely debate it's better. Uh, but it's not the same defense. They're not going to blitz as much. They're not going to blitz as effectively. And they're not going to rush the edge as effectively. They have pretty good interior rush, um, you know, for sure. Uh, and they've been getting better, uh, you know, over the last couple weeks. I think since they got Darius Leonard, the presence he has, even though he's not, he's just an off-the-ball linebacker that can do many things. I think his presence made it better. So don't get me wrong here. They can get pressure. But this is not – it's not the same um, – it, it's not the same as Tampa. I don't want to say piping, though, just because of that, because the Colts defense could, I'll say hot, a mixture, because it's not the same as Tampa, but at the same time, the Colts can make him play less, lesser of, you know, uh, not it to his abilities and win the game because of that. But it's nowhere near going to be like the Tampa game. It, it could be they can slow him down, but it'll be in different ways. So that's a pretty interesting one. I like that one just because it brings up an interesting topic there. 
Um, next, we got from Z Dragon. Dalvin Cook has more total yards than the entire Cowboys offense. I mean, it's pretty crazy that this is doable. It's possible because that's how good Dalvin Cook is, and that's how much the Cowboys offense is struggling. And then keep in mind, the Vikings defense is really pick it, picking it up. I think it's very doable. Um, but I'm still, I'm still going to call it piping because I'm starting to feel uh, that the Cowboys could actually have some success passing the ball, or, you know, using Cooper, using Lamb, using Gallup. Um, the Vikings corner has been playing a little better. Keep in mind, they just played the Bears. Um, you know, I think that the Cowboys actually, I'm starting to think the Cowboys will get more yards and points than I originally thought here because they'll attack the outside, they'll attack the sideline. Uh, I think I'm starting to think that Cooper could get going and then they'll get Lamb kind of, They'll, they'll, they'll really get things open because Lamb will be in the middle of the field, you know, playing from the slot. Uh, you know, between those two, I think, uh, and who knows, it might not be Cooper, it might be Gallup controlling the sideline, could be split between the two of them. Um, so I actually think they get more going. I, didn't, I think they'll get some more yards. This game actually could be a little more, you know, Vikings match up very well with them, so they should win this game. Um, but the Cowboys will get a little more going than I th originally thought. I think a lot of us thought, uh, perhaps, you know, if they start down, you know, big early, then it's going to be a disaster. Next, uh, from Nathan Sangera, uh, Joe Burrow doesn't get sacked at all by the Washington defense line and leads the Bengals to a win, 300-plus yards, three touchdowns, zero receptions. So first glance, this looks pretty damn piping. You know, it doesn't get sacked. He's behind maybe the worst offense line in football when they play pretty good defenses, pass rushers in general. He, he gets sacked, you know, multiple, several times, and that's the factor of the game. And you look at it, Washington's got a pretty good pass rush. So at first glance, it looks pretty damn piping. But... Washington does have a good front seven. It's not really the same as Pittsburgh and Baltimore, who, who the Joe Burrow and the Bengals really struggled against. It's not the same. Different coverages, different way of getting pressure. They get pressure with their their normal defensive line, but they also those teams also blitz a lot. So it's it, both those teams are three four. It's a four three. So it's actually a lot different defense. Um, I'm not going to call it piping. I'm still going to call it hot because I, he'll. Let's be honest. He'll probably get sacked at least once. I don't think it's an insane. I don't think it's as much as people probably think. Uh, in, you know, in terms of the other part, I picked the Bengals to win. It's kind of a 50-50 game. Uh, I'm confident with the Bengals though. In 300 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, I think is very doable. I think that part is pretty realistic. Uh, but because of the sacked part, I do think it's. I do think he'll get sacked. Um, so that part makes it hot, but it's it's not going to be as much as people think. You know, it's not the same as the Steelers and the Ravens. And at any given time, this defense could be better than those defenses. You know, most of the time, those ones are going to be slightly better, but it's just a different matchup. Um, so it's an interesting one for sure. And one more here. Uh, Moafa, Justin Herbert cutting his hair will prove to be bad luck as the winless Jets get their first win against the Chargers. Um... Yeah, I don't know about cutting hair. The flow was working. The flow was working. I mean, he hasn't been perfect at all times, but the flow was working. Now he looks even more like a little boy. Um, so that it could be bad luck. It could be, uh, but it actually, it could be luck too because they haven't been winning. You know, the most important thing. You know, he's playing good, but the most important thing to him, I would hope, and it's got to be, is winning. So maybe this turns things around. Uh, the Jets could win. They're actually what they're good at is running some trap coverages on defense, some disguise coverages. So that tends to work against young uh, quarterbacks. So that could be the reason they win. I just don't really see it. Um, but I won't call it piping. We'll just call it hot because it, I guess it's possible. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it could look like bad luck, even though it won't be because of the hair, let's be honest. Um, it won't be because of the hair, just because, yeah, maybe the Jets give them some disguises. But I don't necessarily know if the Jets want to do that because then they want to keep – Losing, you know, at the end of the Patriots game, they ran some terrible coverages, which Greg Williams is a pretty good defensive mind. At the end of the game, they ran uh, zone coverage, really soft zone coverage to give the Patriots field goal position, which was uh, I'm I'm hoping uh, was a tank move because that was bad. So they may not even give Herbert these coverages. You know, who knows? But even if he turns the ball over a little bit, I think he can still he'll have those big plays enough to win the game. So that's that's pretty hot there. Um, yeah. Interesting one to say the least. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll monitor how how the the new Herbert with the short haircut's going to work out. That's going to wrap it up for this one. Follow our Twitter to get more involved and uh, to get constant NFL talk. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe, turn notifications on. We got all kinds of content always being pumped out, so you're not going to want to miss a thing here. And it'll help by turning notifications on. But that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.